In this short section, we will go through some of the very basic notation we use in mathematics. Now, I expect you will know all of the mathematical symbols themselves, but we can use this to get the names sorted out. I will also go through all of the Greek characters that we typically use, clarifying which is which and how we are going to pronounce them. We're going to look at the very elementary arithmetic symbols here. The first one that we undoubtedly need is the equal sign. We need it for any equation. We're saying what's on the left is equal to what's on the right. The plus sign for addition, as in 2 plus 3 equals 5 here. The subtraction sign, which we might also call the minus sign, or we might say 3 minus 2 equals 1, or 3 less 2 equals 1. The multiplication sign, most commonly we might use a cross if we want to be very specific about multiplication, as in 2 times 3 equals 6. Sometimes with numbers we use this dot sign instead, although I will mostly avoid that since it gets a bit ambiguous with the decimal point sign. For division we have several different symbols. When we write numbers div divided by one another in line, we might use the horizontal line with a couple of dots, or the slash sign here. So we could have 6 divided by 3 equals 2, or 6 divided by 3 equals 2 with the slash notation. And then quite often, in fact mostly in algebra, we may use this explicit notation with a numerator on the top and a denominator on the bottom. Sometimes that's called a dividend on the top and a divisor on the bottom. And that whole thing can be called the quotient. So here's 6 divided by 3 equals 2 in a couple of different versions also of writing that same notation. Relational symbols, again, we're very familiar with these, so there should be nothing very new here. The equivalent sign is really just trying to say, well, something more than just equals. So, for example, if the equivalent sign here with this three horizontal line set, what we're saying in this example here is that these two notations, perhaps, are completely equivalent. There's no difference between them. When we are writing down something that is approximately true, but perhaps not exactly the case, as in a good numerical approximation like we have over here, one third is approximately equal to 0.33, we may use one or other of these signs with a solid straight line or perhaps two straight lines and then uh, more of a squiggle on the top line here to indicate this approximately equal to. I'm making no distinction between these two symbols in my use of them here. The proportional sign, which looks like an 8 on its side but not quite completed. If we had a complete 8 on its side, it would be the infinity sign. And this sign means is proportional to. So if we have some number times x, a times x, as we increase x, that number is also going to increase in proportion so we could rather trivially say that a times x is something that is proportional to x. We need the is greater sign to show one thing is larger than another. So rather trivially, 3 is greater than 2. And often we need to be a little bit more precise with some expressions and say that something is greater than or equal to. For example, the expression 1 plus x squared for any particular x here, that's an ordinary real number, then 1 plus x squared is always greater than or equal to 1. If x is equal to 0, 1 on the left and 1 on the right means we get the equal sign. But for any other value of x as a real number, 1 plus x squared is greater than or equal to 1. Similarly, we have the is less than sign and the is less than or equal to sign. And sometimes we want to say that something is much greater than something else. For example, 100 is much greater than 1, so we use the greater than sign twice here. And similarly, is much less than, 1 is much less than 100. Now we're going to quickly run through the Greek characters. We tend to end up using a lot of Greek characters in algebra and mathematics because we run out of Roman character symbols. So what I'm going to show you here is one after the other, 
uh, each of the Greek letters. Here's the first one, for example, the Greek letter alpha, and spelled out with this alpha here. The nearest Roman equivalent is the letter A, and on the keyboard, if you were typing in some symbol font, probably this character would be found with the keyboard letter A. Now, I'm going to give you a set of pronunciations here for Greek letters. These are the ones that are commonly used by people speaking in English. I should say they're not particularly close to the modern Greek versions of these characters as far as the pronunciation is concerned, and I should apologize to all Greeks for that. But this is the standard pronunciation that we tend to use in English speaking in mathematics and engineering. Now, you'll notice that this capital alpha here I have put in a kind of grey font, and that's for the obvious reason that that character is too similar to the Roman letter A as a capital or uppercase, and so we're not going to use it as a Greek letter. Next we move to the Greek letter beta, or beta, and again the capital letter is too close to the Roman one, so we won't use that, but we use the lowercase quite a lot. The closest Roman letter is the letter B. The letter gamma, again we'll use the uppercase and the lowercase quite a lot closest Roman letter is G. The letter delta, the uppercase is this kind of triangle, the lowercase, this somewhat uh, curvy D, again closest to the Roman letter D. The, Ro the Greek letter epsilon is one of the two letters E that we find in the Greek language. Again, the uppercase we won't use, the lowercase is used a lot, it's closest to the Roman E, and that's where you'll find it on the keyboard. The Greek letter zeta or zeta is closest to the Roman Z or Z. I will tend here to use the American pronunciation of this uh, Roman letter, I will say Z rather than Z, which would be a British or Canadian pronunciation or also used in some other countries as well. We won't use the uppercase Greek letter here because it's too close to the Roman one. Eta is the second of the two letters E in the Greek alphabet. It's a different kind of character compared to an E. It doesn't look anything like an E in Roman alphabet. It's got a long tail on something that looks more like an N. And strangely enough, we will find this under the letter H, typically on a keyboard when we're using a symbol font. And again, we don't use the uppercase H. I should say that this letter has no relation at all to the Roman letter H in terms of its sound in Greek or anywhere else. The letter theta or theta we use quite a lot, both in the lowercase and in the uppercase. The closest Roman equivalent is the pair of letters TH, and this one will be found under the letter Q on the keyboard, partly because this theta perhaps looks just a little bit like a capital Q, but not very much. The letter iota is the Greek I, and it's too close to the Roman I, so we don't use it in algebra. The letter kappa we use a lot. It's very close to the Roman K, but you'll notice that in the lowercase form, it does not have an extended stock up the left-hand side. The uppercase we don't use because it's too close to the Roman K. The letter lambda is used extensively. It's closest to the letter L. Actually, the Roman letter L is one that we won't normally use as a variable because it looks too close to the number one. But the Greek letter lambda, both in lowercase and uppercase here, is quite distinctive and we use it a lot. The Greek letter mu is closest to the Roman letter M, and it looks, however, like a U with a little stock on the left-hand side in the lowercase. Sometimes when people write this, they just use the Roman letter U, although that's rather a confusing notation. The uppercase we won't use because it's just too like the Roman M. The Greek letter new, or American English might pronounce it nu, looks kind of like a V in the lower case. Nonetheless, we do use this a lot. It's closest to the Roman letter N, of course, but 
Similarly, we don't use the uppercase here because it's too like the Roman letter N. The letter Xi or Xi is this rather strange character here with a lot of squiggles in it. Sometimes people find that a tricky one to write down until they get used to it. It's closest to the Roman X. The uppercase is a rather strange looking character and as a result is not used very much, but occasionally you will find it. The letter Xi though is used quite a lot even though it's a rather strange thing to write. The letter Omicron is one of the two letters O in the Greek alphabet, but it's just too like the Roman letter O, so we won't use that one. The letter Pi, the equivalent most closely to the Roman letter P, uh, obviously is used extensively because we use Pi to represent the ratio of the diameter and the circumference of, of a circle, a circumference over the diameter. And we'll use both the lower and upper case forms. Sometimes we use pi for other purposes, though usually we would avoid that. The upper case form is sometimes used to indicate a product of various different terms, and we'll come back to that notation later. The Greek letter rho is closest to the Roman r. Somewhat confusingly, it looks more like a Roman p, but you'll notice that there's no little stock or corner up at the top left. It is used a lot. Uh, we don't use the uppercase roll because it just looks too like a Roman P. The Greek letter sigma is closest to the Roman letter S. We use both the lowercase and the uppercase. Mostly we use the uppercase to indicate the summation over a bunch of terms. The Greek letter tau or ta is closest to the Roman T. Again, we won't use the uppercase here because it's too close to the Roman T in the way it's written. Upsilon, very seldom we would use that uh, in algebra. It looks very like the Roman U, and also when you're writing it down, it's rather difficult for um, an English writing person to make enough distinction between that and writing the letter nu, although you could do it. So we tend not to use U because of its similarity to the Roman U and the Greek nu when we're writing it down and the uppercase would be particularly confusing because it looks like a Roman Y. The Greek letter phi, or phi, is closest to the Roman pair of letters, PH, as in the word physics, and it's usually found on the typewriter keyboard under the letter F, which would be the closest phonetic version of this letter. We use both the lowercase and the uppercase versions of phi. Chi is closest to the Roman combination of letters CH, and we find this in the English language in various words, such as chiral, which is C-H-I-R-A-L. When we pronounce it in English, we pronounce it just something like a K. It looks like an X. It's uh, actually, when you have, see it in printed script, you'll see that it's halfway below the line. So these bits down the bottom here will appear below the line. We don't use the uppercase because it's too like the Roman X, but we do use the lowercase quite a lot. Psi is closest to the Roman PSY combination that we see here. Uh, you'll find it under the letter Y probably on the keyboard. We use both the lower and uppercase versions of this quite a lot. And finally, Omega or Omega is the second of the two Greek letters O. Strangely enough, you'll find that on the keyboard under the letter W, most likely, because the lowercase omega looks a bit like a W. The uppercase and lowercase, as I say, are both used quite a lot. Mm -hmm.